Hi, I'm Travis from Paul Component, and today we're going to be talking about boxcar stem faceplates. Uh, we have a lot to say about these. Um, this faceplate is the same for all of our stems, and the nice thing about this faceplate is that it has a lot of surface area, so there's a lot of aluminum gripping your handlebar and keeping it from slipping, which is really nice. So. Um, when you go to install your faceplate on your boxcar stem with your handlebar, make sure you use a torque wrench and don't exceed the specified torque of 4 newton meters. Uh, once you've installed your faceplate, go ahead and bounce on your bars a little bit to make sure your bar isn't going to slip. If your bar does slip at 4 newton meters, uh, you can get a product that is often used for carbon assembly. It's a carbon assembly paste, or in this case, it's called fiber grip. And this adds a texture between your handlebar. A lot of carbon fiber handlebars can be very slippery. Um, so you add some of this, give it another bounce, and you should be good. You shouldn't need to exceed that four Newton meters. You could try five Newton meters, but we really would recommend that you stick with four Newton meters. And if you have any problems, give us a call. So we did something fun for us, which was destroy some of our product. And we decided to test our faceplate to see how strong it really was. Um, so we tightened the faceplate to four Newton meters with our torque wrench, and then we tightened it one Newton meter at a time and checked the results to see what would happen. So we tightened it to four Newton meters, don't exceed that. Then we tightened it up to five, six, seven Newton meters was where we started to have measurable bar deformation. So we could actually see that the handlebar was starting to get a little bit oblong shaped and the face plate is starting to squish the bar. Um, and if this was a carbon fiber handlebar, you could maybe see some cracking at this point. Um, very bad. So while this does distribute force very, very evenly across the handlebar, more than most stems. Um, this is where you start to see the bar change shape a little bit, it was at eight Newton meters. So we kept going until we reached 12 Newton meters, which is three times the specified torque. And then we said, well, it still looks fine. Let's keep going. So we took it up to 15 Newton meters. Now that is the maximum torque available on your typical handheld little torque wrench that you would find at a bike shop, in this case, a TW5. So you can't go any higher than 15 Newton meters with this, and it was still fine. So then we got this thing out, which you would never want to use this on a stem. This is for crank bolts and other bigger bike parts. And we kept going. Uh, we got to 16 Newton meters. That's four times the specified torque, uh, which is ridiculous. And then uh, finally, at about 19 Newton meters, the bolt heads started to deform a bit. And at 20 Newton meters, the bit started jumping out of the bolt heads and we were unable to go any farther. Um, it's been sitting for a few days now without any cracks. We flexed it a bunch. Uh, it's still holding up great. So uh, this is a great test. So. Let's say you over tighten your stem faceplate and you give us a call and say, my faceplate cracked. We are not going to warranty it because we know it's very tough, but we are adding stem faceplates to the website so you can purchase one on our website. Is this a 110 millimeter stem? You can purchase a faceplate on our website and we won't tell anybody that you damaged your faceplate by over tightening it. It'll be our little secret.